Hi everyone and welcome back. It's me again, Ian, with more Audi TT Mark II mods. Now, this time around, what we're going to be doing is looking at the center light unit and upgrading that. So not only will I be upgrading it to an LED interior ambient light unit where it also has red LED interior ambient lights coming out of it, but there's a little home link button section. There's three sections which usually opens up your garage door, which is an OEM upgrade part. But in this video, what I'm going to be doing is going to be hacking away a little bit at it and making it function for my own little purpose. So here you can see the original OEM regular unit, and this is the Homelink LED unit. You can see the side lights there are LED units. And another comparison picture of the boards there with the original one on the top and the LED unit down the bottom. Just flipping it over, you can see I've upgraded the top original one with LED globes, which you don't need in the upgraded unit because there's LED boards there. These buttons are going to be the focus of this video. So what I'm going to do is open them up so you can see exactly what's inside. And there are these three switches which I'm going to focus on. Here you can see the pinout of the home link panel and how the switches are wired up. Now, my original plan was to actually get in there and jump these switches and not utilize those five pins. However, I did have to make my own board in order to have three switches working the way I wanted them to. The parts that you can see on the screen now is the other piece of the puzzle to this modification. So these two key rings are going to be able to control an exhaust valve flap, which is part of the Varex wireless exhaust control system. So not only does this key fob control the valves, but there is also an app which we'll look at later. So how is this all going to come together to work? First, we've got to strip both Part. So the home link and the key fob has been opened up and you can see I'm just testing the key fob buttons here. It's very simple. There are two momentary switches. Now in order to get this to work with the home link panel, what you've got to do is get some hookup wire and wire them into either side of those momentary switches. This then needs to be hooked up into this custom board that I've got other switches that hook into the buttons on the home link panel. And you can see here, this is how I've wired them up on the board. I have had to stagger them a little bit because in line, the buttons weren't functioning properly. And for some reason they were always on. So this is why I wasn't able to use the OEM PCB board because all of those momentary switches that are already in there were in line. And so when I was testing this out, as you can see here, that the red LED uh, signal light was always on with the original board being used. However, now with the custom board inside, you can see it functions fine. All right, so now that works, let's have a look and see what exactly I've done with this custom PCB board. You can see that faded gray outline. So I had to cut the same shape out using the original board as a stencil. Once that was cut out and fit fine, I was able to mock up where I wanted the momentary switches. I'll focus in on these two switches here as this is what I'm going to be using for this modification. There are only two buttons on that key fob, so I only needed two momentary switches to be active. The original way that I had them wired up was to use the common rail up the top as the ground and then have the signal or the power at the bottom section um, of these momentary switches. However, I did find that wiring them up like this had the switch always on, which is not ideal. And so you can see in this picture here, the switch number two is rotated 90 degrees and also on its own. So it's on an isolated power source and an isolated ground source from button number one, which I think is going to be integral to doing this mod because as I was testing it out on the original PCB board, which looks like they're wired up with the common ground, it wasn't working properly either. 
Now, if anyone has any insight as to why having this common ground didn't work and always had the buttons on, I would really, really love to know as I would ideally want to be using that OEM PCB board. So please comment in the comments below to let me know if you've got any insight as to why having these momentary switches with a common ground doesn't function the way I wanted them to. Now that I've got the modified home link panel working properly, I've retrofit that board. So the little board from the key fob into the light unit, as you can see there with power and ground at either end of the plug that the uh, loom from the car goes into. And there's a unit fitted into the ceiling and here's some testing for you. So I'll just let you watch this first section for now and then I'll explain what's going on with a little bit of the uh, app showing up on the screen later on. So that red light's basically telling me that it's picking up the switch signal from the home link panel. Now I've just opened up the Varex X-Force app here and I've hooked up the exhaust module to the actual exhaust and you can see the valve position on the screen on the left hand side. So just following this wiring which goes from the module over to the exhaust, you can see this is the Varex exhaust. All right, so that's it everyone. Thanks for watching. That was a nice and quick video this time around. If you wanna see other Audi TT Mark II upgrades, mods and fixes, there is the playlist there that you can click on also, you'll be seeing updates for this exhaust flapper mod come up very, very soon. So keep an eye out for that one. Till next time, see you later.